Good afternoon. I am Daniel Mall, the Executive Vice President for Sales and Marketing, ArcelorMittal USA. My job responsibilities include overseeing and coordinating ArcelorMittal sales of flat rolled steel products in the United States. Thank you for holding the hearing to discuss the state of the global steel industry and its impact on the U.S. steel industry and market. ArcelorMittal is the largest global steel producer and I believe uniquely positioned to comment on the global steel situation. As a me member of our company's Chief Marketing Officers Council, I am well aware of the challenges that we are facing throughout the world. I hear about it from my counterparts on a regular basis. Throughout global markets, China presents a common challenge. You are undoubtedly familiar with the story and the numbers. You will hear them many times today. As a result of Chinese government policies, China's steel production grew dramatically since the year 2000 to over 800 million metric tons, well more than demanded by the Chinese market. Now they are sending that excess production abroad, exporting 112 million metric tons to world markets in 2015. ArcelorMittal is confronting the disruptive impact of those Chinese exports in the United States and markets around the world. Our group's financial performance demonstrated that 2015 was a very tough year for the steel and mining industry. We reported a full year 2015 net loss of $7.9 billion, largely due to the deterioration in global prices as a result of excess capacity in China. In the U.S., we saw domestic steel pricing decline by more than 40 percent between 2014 and the end of 2015. As you know, ArcelorMittal USA has joined with other U.S. producers to bring a number of trade remedy cases, not just against China, but also against other countries whose exports to the U.S. are injuring our business. Often those producers are seeking new markets because they have been displaced by Chinese producers in their own markets. And we have seen an increase in imports of downstream products made from cheap Chinese steel. These direct effects of China's exports are as harmful to our U.S. business as when China ships directly to the United States. Whether we lose a sale directly to a Chinese steel producer or we lose a sale to an OCTG customer who can't compete with Korean-made pipe from Chinese hot-rolled steel or lose a plate sale to a Brazilian or European plate producer looking for a new market as Chinese producers take their customers at home, all have the same effect on our business in the U.S. We sell less steel. We receive less money for the steel that we do sell and employ fewer workers. Over the long term, the situation is not sustainable for U.S. producers who operate without the kind of government support provided to the Chinese steel industry. As a company, ArcelorMittal has been transparent with our employees about the challenges facing the steel industry and our U.S. operations. We have taken some difficult steps to ensure we have a competitive business model in place, implementing a number of cost savings initiatives, including a reduction in purchasing, supplier, and operating costs, and a revised health care plan for our salaried employees. We are working hard to improve our business performance through strategies that include asset optimization and the negotiation of a new labor contract with the United Steelworkers. We have implemented a hiring freeze and are currently not replacing any personnel lost through retirement or resignation. As, passive, as part of our asset optimization plan, ArcelorMittal USA has mostly exited the long product business. We closed our wire rod plant in Georgetown, South Carolina after a surge in Chinese imports devastated that business. We also closed our Indiana Harbor long carbon operations in Northwest Indiana. We have taken all of these difficult steps in an effort to improve our competitiveness. 
We are focused on running our best assets at world-class pro production levels and optimizing our capabilities to meet market demand. In other words, we aren't relying on government policy alone to deal with the global challenges we face. But our efforts are more likely to be successful if the U.S. government vigorously enforces U.S. trade remedy laws and joins the other governments to address the excess Chinese steel that is being dumped on world markets. We need solutions at the U.S. border, but we also need to find a solution to impact that China is having on global steel markets. We need governments throughout the steelmaking world to come together to make clear to China that we need to reduce their excess capacity in steelmaking the way a market-based economy would rather than exporting it. And we need to be sure that other governments, particularly in the developing world, don't follow the Chinese example of subsidizing the development of their steel industries. Thank you. I'll be happy to take any questions at the appropriate time.